All right, welcome back and welcome to a brand new audio, video, YouTube adventure of Those Millennials Podcast. Today I'm your grateful, humble host, Kay the Classic. I'm here by Nearest and Dearest, my boys and friends in real life. Jesse's here, already representing Black History Month with the pick, with the fist pick. How are you doing? Oh, it's not a fist. It's not a fist. I do got a fist. I thought I had a fist. My bad, bro. Nah, I got the fist. Failure failure on you. Uh, It's somewhere else. It's in my backpack. Ooh, uh, going through some shit, work bullshit, and uh, pockets. They still, they still struggling. Still got. Remind me, I got to pay rent. Thanks, Cat. Thanks, Cat. <laughs> it is the first. Um, Rails here. How's your pockets? How's your mental health? What's Gucci? Uh, yeah. So, uh, happy Black History Month uh, to all our fellow millennials. Uh. Happy first of Black History Month, the first day of Black History Month. Um, Happy BHM. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you guys. Uh, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It helps the pod grow if you're listening on. Quick Apple question, show. quick question, quick question. How are you doing, Cap? Oh, man. Um, 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 turmoil. Is that the word? Turmoil? Yeah. Turmoil. Yeah, I'm in turmoil. Okay. We'll okay. figure it out. We'll see. We'll come back to me next week. I'm in turmoil though. Inside. Um, but on the outside, you're all right. Um, you made me uh yeah, if you're listening on on I on uh, on on the DSPs on Apple, please leave a review. Uh don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It helps the pod grow as well. If you're listening on Spotify, shout out to you. Uh Google Play, Stitcher. I forget all whenever I do this, I always forget all the names of these podcast streaming services or not because i just figure people just use like those four but i there's like 50 other ones but yeah anyway but um yeah a lot of stuff happened uh people were tweeting uh joel and b (laughs) joel and b tours meniscus and now we're talking about the 65 game rule um and we're gonna talk about super bowl stuff that's what we're going to talk about in this spot today. Oh, and we're going to talk about the Lakers. Lakers corner. Lakers corner is coming back. But first and foremost, as I previously stated, uh, we did have a really good conference, two really, nah, one and a half really good conference championship game because one was a complete ass kicking for the most part. And the other one was a complete awesome game. Uh, one a comeback win by the San Francisco 49ers. Um, but so now we have a 49ers. Now we have a, a Super Bowl matchup of the year 2000, 2020, 2020 rematch of the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes against that unstoppable, unmovable object, Brock Purdy, that people either you love him. Or you think he's complete unstoppable, <laughs> unmovable? What the fuck game did you, hey, you watch? Just, <laughs> I, I was like, you said I mean, it's not as the as as me saying that's what I, I was leading up until. Okay, because I, I was like, you said, or you hate him? There's no in between hey, with Bob Purdy. I literally argued with somebody because I was like, Bob Purdy's cool. Like he's he's around twelve or eleven. They thought I was. I was like, they they thought I spit in his face. I was like, he's a top eleven. It's nothing wrong with that. He's a top eleven. Nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, and yeah. Like, he's that... a top five. I was like, no. I was like, all right, you got it. He's, he's a, like, this is a 49ers fan. No, he's, like, Man, he's not top I five. Like I, 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 I will. There was like so I will they, gave, a, they threw the statistic thing at me, Jesse. It was like statistically his numbers are up there with everybody. And I'm just like, but yeah, well, if everybody had that the team, list of quarterbacks, I can take over him though. <laughs> I can give him to you. I, and I hate to argue, do the argument if everybody had that team, but literally, if the top five players in the league and the top five quarterbacks Cam had that, that today, team, everybody killed him today. Yeah, the top five quarterbacks had that we team. Start, we should start listening to Cam. Cam Newton's telling the truth about Cam, what he's saying. Cam been saying some real. Cam been saying some real. Cam, and, no, it's never so, like so. So Cam called Brock Purdy a game manager, but then he doubled down or tripled down because he said Brock Purdy is isn't even the the fifth best player on his team. Is that what he said? He's he said he says the tenth best player he and the tenth he, best player on his team. Jesus. I mean, he, he, and, he, and, he, and he, so that's, but you know what? But, 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 but no, 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 but you got to understand, like, 
There's a lot of talent in the Niners offense. He's no, not no, hate. that's what I'm saying. But that's hate. He got to be in the top ten. No, no, that's, no. that's not hate. I can, I, no. I can name, I can name that's ten players. I can name ten players probably better than Brock Purdy on, on the Niners. But anyways, but that's I, not I hate. You probably can, that's not but hate. that's hate. No, it's, it's not. not. I, no, it's not it's because not it's hate. true. Well, it's not. Hall of Fame. He has my, literally the greatest left tackle in the game. This is the point about Brock Purdy. It, it for whatever reason, Mister Irrelevant. Is in he does this? No, thing it's be, just, no, it's just because he's not nine, top it, ten. It's not. It's no, not, no, no. Look, I'm just saying we all. It's Niner Nation. Anybody that you talk to about Brock Purdy, either it's he's awesome and he's underrated, or he's literally a game manager. But or you can also tell he's not really not underrated. He's not, he's underrated. not underrated. No, hey, look, he's he's not. Look, I, not to cut you off, bro. This is not look. His story is amazing. It is beyond amazing. Like that, it, to go from Mister Irrelevant to being a, a, a you know you took your team to a conference finals and now you took them to a Super Bowl and you played really well in that conference finals in that second half. You yeah. you brought him back and everything after having like using a your throw. legs. It wasn't really his arm. What's using that doesn't... your legs. I, that don't really mean nothing to me. Like really? It, it really, no, it doesn't because it's a, because the reason the why he had are Russian because the lanes. Yeah, are that, that's what I was like. He had to use his legs to do it. I, no, I think we. I just, this is a. That's a. That's I think that's underestimating progressions because if you don't know if he went how he played in college, that's how he played in college. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I know. So it's but like it just, using it, his legs to me, it's, it it's, says something because. Especially the way he was doing it on third, like he was. Yeah, but they was, left it open like that for him. Yeah, so he I, I did. He took the you. smart play. I feel you. You know I'm what I mean? You, but I'm just. But it says so. It says something. Go ahead. But I, so all I'm saying is like, it's not a thing to sit there and like. I think people. Here's the issue. I think people are not praising him enough for where he came from, but I think it's enough. I think everybody's. It, it, I do believe people are stuck in the. Well, he's Mr. Irrelevant. He shouldn't be doing that well, so he's not that great. But it's like he is that he is that good. He shouldn't have been Mr. Irrelevant. Just around and the it, same page, you guys agree? Yeah. With me. He's a, he's around eleven or fifteen best quarterback in the world. I, I I would argue. I could probably make an argument for if somebody said top ten, I'll give it. I'll be like, sure. Yeah, that's yeah. That's I, I, wouldn't, I, I said wouldn't argue this, against this is it. How I worded it. I said his floor is fifteen, but like there's yeah. His, his ceiling is like nine. Yeah, yeah. That's how I, that's how I explained it to. That's how I explained. I it agree. To yeah. And we got to see, you know, we got to see how how a Joe Burrow comes back. One that's thing about Joe Burrow is like, he you now is quarterbacks were hurt this year. I was that's why I was I was literally trying to explain to this person. I was like It was a like very four awesome if you look at it, it was not a, awesome, but four quarterbacks that I think that that were hurt this season that were better than him. And if you really look at it, if you really think about it, um this was not a great quarterback season. So no, quarterbacks got hurt. That's what I was just saying. Quarterbacks are, Yeah, no, just even stat wise. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers was out. I, even I, 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 I don't love I didn't Kirk think Cousins, he was but Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins got He was having a great season. season. Yeah, he was having a great season, even though they weren't winning. Um, winning but he was having a great season. Joe Burrow, you know, he, Joe he Burrow, got off hurt, and then he came, he, then he turned on the and quest, he played better, yeah. and then he got hurt. Now the question about Joe Burrow is, is he injury pro? Yeah. That's the question about Aaron Joe Burrow. So, yeah, you know, yeah, a lot of guys, and, and, a lot of these guys that uh, like he's he's better than we can name a bunch of quarterbacks. He's better than Deshaun Watson right now. You know what I mean? Who's better? Is CJ Stroud or is that's, he better? That's one of those ones where he can it can go flip or back and forth for me. Same thing with Dak. Like it can go flip or, like it, this yeah. musical chairs. Musical chairs. Question is, could Dak do what he does on the 49ers? I do think Dak can do that. Yeah, yeah I think Dak can do that. But you also, see, we're, we're, Dak we're, don't got to be the, the reason to win Jesse, every year, every game. Like Brock true. wasn't the reason that win every game. That's, that's, if that, that, if that's Dak true. only has to give that one game, and hopefully it's the most important game, game. then and the, the crazy yeah. thing is Jesse, we're all not talking about the what should be the biggest story. We're all we all talked about the Niners. Why is it enough people to talking about this is probably the this, I, I don't. I hate, I hate to sound like Nick Wright, but this is probably the best five-year run of a team in the last five years of a Super Bowl team of a contender of a dynasty. I don't want to. I mean, they're I guess they're a dynasty because 
they've won. They're a dynasty, even though they didn't win. I know people try to put the number of rings, but it's a dynasty when you go to when you go to four out of five Super Bowls. Four Bowl. out of five Super Bowls. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, yeah. literally, they they he, he he didn't have an offense. We talked sh- all shit about his offense. They they basically limped into the playoffs. You know what, uh, Kev? No, what? I'm gonna say it like this: How I said it in the chat. <laughs> this is why I watch wrestling because I go with the understanding that it's scripted. <laughs> <laughs> Not according to everybody that was play. doing the whole logo thing. The, the, the yeah, like 49ers. Just, yeah. I hated the little logo thing. Everybody was like, oh, I'll just play. It ain't, I, I'm not one of those that think the sports is scripted. I'll just play. Don't do that. But dead ass though, like, Pat, why do we doubt Patrick? Because he limped into the playoffs, but why did we doubt? I told you how my you, you team, saw you saw that team that lost to the fucking Raiders <laughs> on Christmas I know. Day. I know. You, what do you mean? Why did we doubt them? It's like they had like if anything, like what they did first. The Ravens was put together two good drives and then lean on that defense, mm-hmm. which they're gonna do again um, uh, coming up. So, so like is- the reason why we we we, we debated we did because the, all the receivers were trash. So Pat, only thing Pat's not gonna do it. He's just not fucking up the game. He's going. I'm just not going to turn. He has no turnovers this postseason. That's big. You don't turn the ball over. That's huge. He doesn't turn the ball over, and that defense is incredible. Like that defense is is. I, is incredible. I don't want to just toot my own horn, but when uh, three weeks ago, when we all decided to pick when the playoffs just started, and we we chose who we was like making our picks to who was going to pick to go into the Super Bowl. I did have the Kansas City Chiefs and the 49ers going to the Super Bowl. I, I wonder. I should have put money on it. But I didn't. You should have. You be a rich man right now. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you should have bet that one. I knew that. I, I will say yeah. this: what? it's funny because one can argue. Yeah. Patrick Mahomes is being a game manager right now, but okay. <laughs> um, I was the look. They looked. They looked the best against the Bills, and. Yes. They they didn't look that great against the Dolphins. They it took them a while for the offense to get going. Too too great, too good. Yeah, <laughs> the weather, big time weather, weather. They uh, which it is. They didn't need to, yeah. but um, uh, right. they did. They did just enough. They didn't look. Uh, it looked promising after the first drive against the Ravens. Uh, but then the Ravens were able to fix it. It's their offense, you know, their offense laid an egg. Yeah. Um and then you know I think uh so it's gonna be interesting to see them against the 49ers if we could, if we want to do like a little quick preview. Um the yeah. one thing that the 49ers are able to do is run run the ball. And I think I think McCaffrey gonna ball out, but I don't know if it'll be enough. Um if it'll be enough to beat them. Uh the 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 Chiefs offense does have to show up. Those wide receivers better catch some balls and uh I know they've been getting some good ones, but uh, you know, I think Rice is going to have to. I think Rice is, and I don't know. Kelsey's like you said it, Kev, on the phone. Kelsey, uh, Kelsey good for like two quarters. He plays. So what he, quarter is he, he going to show up? One half, and then that half, and yeah. then he literally just like he go ice bath or something, or just go. He might as well just go in the box with Taylor because after that he's done. But this is my stance, and this is I'm, I'm I told you just how this I'm, until further notice, I'm not betting against Patrick Mahomes. Until yeah. further notice, if he goes into the playoffs with health, if he goes into the playoffs healthy, nine times. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just saying, if nine, he like, goes into the playoffs healthy. Um, and remember that one time he didn't is go not in healthy. Decimated, <laughs> and the defense is not decimated. I don't even care who's on his offense anymore. Kevin, he went into the playoffs one time not healthy and won the not Super healthy. Bowl. Yeah, not healthy. <laughs> I'm not betting until further notice. I'm not betting the thing. The, the thing about the Niners, like the Niners, nine times out of ten, you know, if you're uh, not Dan Campbell, you win that game. Um, yeah. You, and like, and, and it literally was a smorgasbord of everything that had to go wrong. They had to pick the pick goes off the helmet. I you catch a thirty yard pass. Um, Jameer Gibbs is fumble. Um, the fourth down when you should have take the points. The f- the fourth down before the half when you're going to kick the field goal when you've been aggressive when you almost had 200 yards of rushing at halftime against the same Niners defense. Oh. So, so so you should have punched it in. You don't win with fucking field goals. You win with touchdowns. 
anybody else plays that game, the Niners lose that game. And I didn't plan like shit. I don't even know what's up with the defense, but I think Patrick Mahomes is going to win this game. And I don't think it's going to be close either. Mm. But while I'm there, I'm going to get to my picks since yeah, I'm get, here. Get to the picks. So I, I, I could go. Do you got Gatorade uh, color? Do you got? No, I don't have Gatorade. The, the the Super Bowl, uh, not the Super Bowl, but the um that um. The I got Apple Banner, Banner gonna be saying, but uh, so I got. You got the Usher playlist. You got the Usher playlist. <laughs> yeah. The right. first thing I, the first thing I got on this uh, single game parlay is um Isaiah Pacheco over sixty eight and a half yards because the Niners defense. Oh, what the fuck's up with that? They can't okay. stop or oh, bloody nose. So. So Brock Purdy over 11 and a half yards rushing and Debo okay. over four and a half catches. So Isaiah Pacheco over 68 and a half, uh, Brock Purdy over 11 and a half rushing yards and Debo over 11, over four and a half reception, a single game parlay that gets you plus 435. So if you throw 100 at it, you'll get $435 back. So <clears throat> that is my favorite play that I, that I cooked up this week. Um, but to the anthem, the anthem is the one I've been doing the most. Home run, you've been you've um, been on the anthem for for years now, and it, and you you were sick. So can you explain to the audience that 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 don't know what the, what we're doing? So basically, every year the Super Bowl releases a bunch of these crazy prop bets where you can bet on like you know who the camera will show first, what color the Gatorade will be, uh, how many times you can literally like people come out here just to bet the Super Bowl. So it's crazy that it's, that it's actually out here because, you know, I've seen it out here the last year, how crazy it was out here. I know it's about to be double as crazy um, this upcoming week. But so one of the things you can bet on the prop bets that I'm actually going to bet is the, um, is the anthem. Um, that, that's a big one. Um, I, I bet, like say. Jesse wasn't kidding when he said you can bet on Usher's playlist. Yeah. You can, and I, I got to play for that too. So uh, I forgot who I can't. I forgot her name. It was Reby Mac. Reezy. I'm trying to pull up her name. Hold on. Oh, who's singing the anthem? Yeah. I couldn't. I didn't. I couldn't think of her name. But anyways, I can't. Sorry. Apologize to whoever's singing the anthem. But I went back and I looked, and I decided you got to do a little homework when it comes to these anthem. You don't just bet it. So in the last ten years, we've had. This is sick. <laughs> You're One, two, three, four unders. We've had You're four unders in the last. Week. We've had four unders in the last ten years. You're not well. I won't say you're sick. You're not well. Whatever. <laughs> we've had four unders in the last ten years. So Chris Stapleton went under his time, which was scheduled at two o five. He got two o one. Um, so there's been a lot of unders. Like I think Beyonce went under. Um, but I mean, there's been some mostly overs lately. But this one. I don't know, man. It's kind of tough. I mean, like you have to go back, like you. So what I did was I watched her sing the national anthem at the at the at the rodeo out of San Antonio when she did it back in 2010. And she came <laughs> under, she came under 94 seconds, which is a minute and 30. Um, and so the average national anthem time runtime. It's like you got is, a notebook in there. <laughs> actually, the average national anthem. Yeah. yeah. People really bet on this though, and put like. I'm going to say it's an underplay. So on the how long somebody sings the national anthem. Oh, I know, so, I know. This has been for a while now. Thick. Hey, hey, bro, so, I'm with you. I, I would go under. So here, here's some things I found out. Is it, 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 it you say it's Reba McIntyre? Yeah, I think it's Reba something. Yeah. Yeah. If she she a country singer, I think she might go on there. I think I'm with you. I mean, Chris Stapleton finished just over the two minute line last year. He was the first under since Demi Lovato in Super Bowl fifty three. Six artists dating back to Beyonce in Super Bowl thirty eight have eclipsed the two minute and six air mark, which is like the average time. So I mean, I think this is an underplay. She sings slow. I watched both of her times. She sung the national anthem. It was once was at a, um, like I said, a rodeo contest. And I just think it's an under a minute and thirty seconds. I just like it. I'm, I'm, I really like this. Y'all play. know, man. She may, she may feel the, she may feel the, 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 my the, the, you know, the jitters. She may feel the jitters. My and then she might stretch out a little. It's all I was about a millionaire, right? When why wouldn't I put? 50 grand 50 grand on and then talk and then reach out to the person that's singing anthem like hey i'll give because you she don't give a shit money. about your 50 grand okay i mean you think how many how many people would do that you know 
If you put fifty, like, like she's a this, singer. You think she thinks she thinks the payout she... be? This is like one of them Drake payouts. Like, what? what, what this is. What, I mean, fifty thousand. I mean, it's at a minus one fifteen. So you're clean, you're kind of washing your money. You know, oh. it's kind of fifty for fifty. So. So, I mean, my thing is, like, nobody really, I don't think nobody's, if you are that deep, I don't think she would be like, oh, I'm going to hold a note that long to sing it, you know? So, and even then, she they already have her on the timer. So, so we don't know how long their time is going to be. I need somebody to post the footage of her singing National Anthem in Vegas before I get out of here. Um, But, yeah, you guys want to guess who the longest National Anthem ever was? Tell me. Alicia Keys, 2 minutes, 36 seconds at Super Bowl 47. I can see, um, I can see that. So yeah, yeah, but that one that one don't surprise but, me. Moving on to now to my favorite just start prop. pressing on that piano. My favorite prop of the weekend. Um oh, that wasn't which is good. That wasn't your favorite. No, that was just one of them. I did a lot of work on that because I like the I like because it's had a minus one ten, minus one fifteen. You're gonna rip that under is gonna be I'm gonna go under. So let that be a stay for the fact. I'm going under on, on the minute and thirty seconds. So but also we're gonna go to the Usher halftime show. Three bets I like for this. Um, the um the first song that um he he sing right now the favorite is Love in His Club at plus three hundred, which I think is stupid. I don't think he's gonna start with Love in His Club. I think if he's gonna do it, I think he might stage it like he does his residency. He always starts mm-hmm. with My Way, so My Way mm. is at plus twelve hundred right now. It's his okay. very first album, his very first hit. I don't think, and in the second favorite is a song. I don't even want him to it's fucking not, perform. It's not his first hit, but keep going. My way, what, 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 which one is his first hit? You make me wanna. We keep going. Oh, oh yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Um, but wait, my way was it first? No. no. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you make. No, yeah, you ahead. make me wanna came out before. Yeah. But it's on the same yeah. album. It's yeah. It's both. Of, but okay. Either way, if you bet this, both of those songs are plus twelve hundred. Yeah. They're plus twelve hundred, which means you could bet a hundred and get twelve hundred dollars back. So I mean I don't this is the That's first hard. song he start he starts with because right now love in his club is love in his club is favorite and the second favorite he is oh my god it's oh my god no. and, and he should do oh my god but... he's gonna do it but it's not it, it's not gonna be the it's one he starts quick. with he, he'll be yeah clothes or something. it'll be a transition he'll be it'll be a transition he'll be switching he gotta so, do daddy's home he gotta do daddy's home so my favorite bet oh, not on on the, on the on the usher prop stage. He might. Uh, there goes my baby. He's gonna do nice and slow. He's gonna do nice and slow on the. Nice and, uh, he's doing, he's gonna he's, black. He's, he's gonna, gonna black nice out the slow, stadium and only, do nice and slow. He's gonna do nice and slow only to do the stupid TikTok. What was Usher doing in his drop top? Oh yeah. He, the, he's gonna do that. Yeah. He's gonna. And he's gonna do confessions. Oh. He's gonna do confessions. Yes. Oh, he may start with confessions. No, he won't. No. I, so, but like I said, okay. Let me get back to this. so. I thought he might club, start but, with good good. Because it's new. Mm-hmm. There you no, go. Good, I mean, or, uh, you can, good, good, gonna be in the middle. Or, good, good, gonna be in the middle. Or no limit. Make a sense. Nah, no, anything, no anything new is gonna be in the middle. Anything new is gonna be in the middle. But, but go ahead, Ralph. Go ahead. So I like you make me wanna or the other song. What was it? What was the other song you said? You remind what, what, his first single. Oh, uh, you make me wanna. You make me. It's either you're gonna be. You make me wanna or, um, or what's the other way. song? Or my way, so yeah. Yeah. you can get you can get you make me want to or my way right now for at plus twelve hundred because right now their favorites are love in this club and oh my god. So just think about that. Um, Wait, what about we, yeah? What about yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. million percent getting played. Yeah, where's yeah? On yeah, the, but on the, on the, on yeah, but it's it's not listed as a favorite to get played first. That's crazy. Oh, first, yeah, okay. This is this is what song is gonna get played first. Um, also, this I think this is an easy bet. Last year, Rihanna did 11 songs. Right now, Usher over under of how many songs is going to perform is at eight and a half songs. I think this is a stupid bet. Vegas is giving you free fucking money because I think most of these seven. No, Rihanna did 11 last Rihanna year. Rihanna did 11. Yeah, and but Rihanna maybe... was just going through them. I should go try to see and, somebody. And, and I'm gonna be a little. And, and Rihanna was pregnant. So you know, there was more time for her to like walk and just <laughs> us just gonna be dancing and moving. And I don't know what the hell that got to do with anything. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> okay, but I like I like I like the over on the I like the over on this song. So if you can get it eight and a half, nine and a half, I think he's gonna do 10, 11 songs. Um, 
right now, the special guest favorite right now is Alicia Keys at minus 325. Oh, she, she's heavy favorite. So I'm thinking they're going to do my boo. I'm not going to bet this, but I'm just giving you a heads up. It's minus 325. The number of collabs right now is over two and a half. It's minus, it's at minus 215. So now they're saying it could be multiple. So what I'm thinking it's going to be Alicia Keys, Little John. And oh, Ludacris, yeah, Ludacris, Ludacris. Ludacris. yeah. Ludacris. yeah. Ludacris. yeah. I, I think Ludacris. he's gonna do. Ludacris. I think it's so. So over two and a half means Little John, Ludacris, and Alicia Keys. That's three guests. He you can cash that. End with yeah, what I would imagine. He might end with yeah. Also, uh, he another, might loving this club might be the ender. I think no. I, he ends his residency with DJ got us falling in love. So I wonder if he's gonna mirror that. Oh, that's uh, I'm hoping he does. He always no ends. Respect, his, uh, he always ends his residency with DJ got us falling in love. Um, what about you? I, remind me of the what, what about when you remind me? That's good. It's on there. I don't think that's Do you mean, I don't think that's happening in the Super Bowl. You don't I think so? Oh, wait, no, don't leave your girl around me. True play for real. Oh, yeah, get caught up. Caught up's gonna be okay. Caught. You don't have to, you don't have oh. to call. Oh, yeah. you don't have to call. There we go. You don't have to call. Caught up, he could. Good. You don't have to call it, is a great opening track like that. Like that, that is one that everybody's gonna know. You don't have and, to call, and it's it's probably one of his best. It's probably his best dance song, like even at his yeah. shows. Like that, I think it's his best dancing song. Um, that I mean, that he, I see that I've seen him perform at the residency. I think he break gets down like you don't have to call. I think and you, it, I, I, I think you right, bro. When you, when you say he's gonna, he's gonna marry his residency. That's what I'm, this is all I'm going off of as I'm making these bets. I, I'm making it because I has like I've seen the residency a few times and and I, I just I'm not, he ends with DJ got us falling in love. But also the last thing you can bet is the first word Usher says when he gets on the mic. So right now Yo is at plus two fifty, but Vegas is at plus three hundred. He's probably gonna say Vegas. Shout out the city because the city's getting put on the map. So shout out to Vegas. And I think he's gonna go with it's Vegas at plus three hundred because that's what everybody does when you're in Vegas. When you're in Vegas, everybody just screams "fucking Vegas" for some reason. He's literally been calling this place his second home, and he said it multiple times when he sat down with Shannon Sharp for that recently old uh, interview he that he dropped. Uh, all right, thank you, Rail. Uh, thank you to all the sickos that are doing all the prop bets. Uh, you guys are keeping the economy flowing. Uh, I may jump on the one of those. Rail, I may, I may call you and I may sell you something. I may sell you something. <laughs> all right, so time for Jesse Saw a movie. Uh, Jesse, take it away. We don't have to come up with a better title than that, uh, but that's right. almost I mean, right. It's, it's a working name. It's it's a working name. Yeah, it's a working name. <laughs> uh, so I went to see Poor Things uh, with starring Emma Stone and um, Mark Ruffalo. Okay. Yeah, that's his last name. Uh, I was thinking Mark Wahlberg, but hey, Mark Ruffalo. Um, Hulk. It's a good. Uh, or it is a. If uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of people probably, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of people. But it's a movie that is Oscar nominated, so I'm gonna be trying to do a couple of those. So next week, hopefully, it's American Fiction or Godzilla minus one. Uh, so that's what I'm aiming towards. So these are Oscar nominated movies, uh, and this one I can see why it's Oscar nominated. It is a good movie. It is very stylized. It is a um, I say steampunk type stylistic, um, you know, look. It's uh. Crazy idea uh, for anybody that doesn't know the premise of it is basically a woman, uh, Emma Stone, um, tried to kill herself and, you know, a doctor who plays, uh, what's his name? He played, um, he played the Green Goblin in the original Spider-Man series. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. Yes, 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 yes. I can't remember his name I right now. I can't remember his first name, I'm sorry. But uh, and it kind of gives you Frankenstein's monster type vibes. Um, but it's basically a woman re, uh, you know, basically as a child, already an adult, relearning as a child, um, with a childlike brain, relearning the world and everything and uh, how she goes about it and navigates that and finds her womanhood. Uh, there's a lot of sex. There's a lot of naked Emma Stone. There's a lot of naked old men. Um, 
But it's an enjoyable movie. Mark Ruffalo is hilarious in it. Uh, I think you could just Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. There we go. Yes, Willem Dafoe. He, uh, uh, you can he, you can see Mark Ruffalo having a lot of fun. A lot of fun. He is hilarious in it. Um, those, those, these are the type of movies. Whoa, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I just thought about something. Something just went over my head. You said it's Emma Stone having a lot of sex. Is it like you see everything? Is it like you, you. What we talking about? Is, is she? I always, I said this just for you. Stone? I, I said I'm this asking, just for you, Kev. I said this one for you, Kev. Yes, you do see, you do see some body parts. You do see some body parts. Like you, she, she naked. She naked up in there. Like, uh, like, like Holly Berry, Monsters Ball naked, or like Holly Berry, Swordfish naked. Monsters Ball. Oh. Monsters Ball. Like she having a lot of sex, bro. <laughs> a lot of naked sex. Like, yeah. Uh, um. I'm not gonna say what I thought about that, but that's uh, neither here nor oh, there. I, oh, oh, I, I have a great idea, Jesse. Keep going though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but uh, um, uh, yeah, what I would say is it's a very strong movie. I, I would also say this: that's not really like my type of movie. Like uh, you know, but I'm glad I watched it, and it did. And I I enjoyed it because the overall story is great. Um, and it's interesting and it's an interesting style that they went about it. And it's interesting with the, you know, what they chose to do and how to tell the story. So, you know, it was, it was a cool movie. I, I would recommend it for those that want to see something different and interesting. And you just got to kind of go with it because the cinematography is great. How they just, you know, camera angles, camera you know, they use like a, a type of fish eye angle with some uh, for some scenes and everything. So I wouldn't say go to the movie theaters to watch it. It, it. I think it was cool to watch it in the movie theaters, but it's definitely a movie to, to watch at home. You can watch it at home and you'll enjoy it. Okay, the Jesse ranking out of 10. What, what do you rank this movie, Jesse? I put it on a seven. And I, you know, if it was a movie that like it was like my type, my style, or what I like enjoy. Probably a little higher because of the story and how they told the story, but uh, I, I'll go around seven, seven because it was interesting. Seven, to it was see definitely interesting. Great. All right. Um, I said Emma Stone. Oh, yeah, that ain't Emma Watson. I was like, yeah, that Emma Stone. Emma Stone from Easy A. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, is she's a super bad, right? Yes. Yeah, she's that cool. that's what I'm talking about. And she in uh, what's it called? Uh, Emma. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. There's too many Emma's, <laughs> but right. yeah, that's a good one. All right, um, all right. We're gonna get into not list. We're gonna try to move this a little faster, get the train going because we got some stuff that we want to hit on before we uh, we get to um, woman beef that three men are gonna talk about. Um, all right, <laughs> all right. So number one on the not list, uh, LeBron James is joining DraftKings as a talent ambassador. Uh, we'll share NFL picks uh, next season. I'm pretty sure via his Instagram that he was doing last season. So I have, I don't know how this is possible for LeBron to do this, but I, what do you guys say before I sound off on well, all my thoughts on this? Well, it's now legal because the NBA now is allowing, because like they're, they're leaning into the betting game. Like as long as you don't bet on basketball, like, you know, like you are now eligible to do things like this. So, I mean, do I have a problem with it? No, in the aspect of LeBron getting his bag, but I'm what a wins at. <laughs> Good you know? answer. Um, so it's crazy. So the the thing, so how my mind works. So LeBron all early this season was openly and freeingly just out of the kindness of his heart decided to pop up on his live before uh before the nfl every sunday to tell us his picks right like this was this i like was, that though this Ron, was, just like know, me this was happening early in the season now in my head i'm like why is this why are you doing this like why are you and then again also in my mind 
he's constantly showing us that he's all he's doing when he plays video games is play Madden. And he's showing that he's playing against people. People have been challenging him, and he's showing that he's kicking people's ass in Madden, right? Making people quit, whatever. In my mind, I'm like, why is he doing this? And I knew the uh, something in me was like, this is going to lead to something of this sort. Because he did, uh, like, again, I don't know if it was week seven or week six or something. He did give his picks for one week. I know the first week he went almost undefeated besides one game. And then after that, he didn't do so well. Um, but, yeah, uh, shout out to him. I just, I, I just, I, this, this is one of those things where it's like, like you said, proud of him getting his bag. I think that's hard. I think that's dope. But it's at the same time, it's like, uh, I don't know. This is a little, you know. Um, Desi, you have anything to say about it? Desi, you're muted. Desi, you're muted. Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, he, he's going to get that criticism that Rail has, and I have. When I'm with that, bro. I, I, everybody. <laughs> anyways, it's it's just, I don't, I don't care. Go, go, go make some money. Here's my thing. People better not get mad when he making bad bets or bad choices. Oh, like yeah, bad picks. Like, happen. y'all go get mad thinking he's some sort of expert when he's just picking games like the rest of us. So, y'all don't don't take this seriously. Don't be like, oh, I, I, I went with what LeBron now, now this said. This towards the LeBron James buying Vegas team fund, right? Yeah, this is what this yeah. is going for. Or the Bronny James. The Bronny James buying a stake into the Lakers and getting Bronny uh, drafted by the Lakers. There's that too. All right, so number two on the not list. Uh, this one we've been kind of putting off. Uh, not putting off, that's the wrong word. Uh, I, I I would take blame for this. I have been forgetting to bring this up because we've had so much stuff, the the length of stuff that we talked on the not list. But this is this was this happened earlier this month, but I still wanted to kind of talk about it and uh, I guess give it light or just say this is sad. Uh, Sports Illustrated has told all their entire staff that they are being laid off. Um, I don't know. Uh, I assume everybody that listens and watches this show know what Sports Illustrated is. Um, I can't imagine um, you guys not knowing what Sports Illustrated is. Uh, but Sports Illustrated is arguably I don't, I mean, is it arguably, is it the most popular magazine for sports of all time? I think, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's. I mean, I had, I mean, I had a Sports Illustrated subscription. Um, yeah, I would say so. I, I mean, I, LeBron what James, would I say? Most famous, uh, chosen one, you know, the one that everybody I think ESPN about. tried, ESPN tried to ESPN be it, but. ESPN tried their sports, magazine, you know, we have. But slam, sports Illustrated was definitely know, number one. The thing yeah. is that Sports Illustrated should have been with Fox is to ESPN. They should have had a network. They should have had podcasts. You know, they had a lot of talent. They had podcasts. Books. Yeah, but I'm talking about they should have evolved with the game. Whoever purchased them. Kind of stayed the same, and they didn't evolve. And I, I feel bad because Sports Illustrated is one of the, you know, hell, uh, there's a guy Mike Fisher who's been at 38. He, I'm, I'm assuming he made it. He's still writing for him. One of my favorite cowboy, cowboy writers, and he writes for the um, writes for Sports Illustrated. I just it just sucks that they never evolved to that competition. Of they could have been legit number two. I feel like with a channel. Agreed. Um, I, I knew. I don't want to say I knew something was bad uh, or nothing or gonna something like this was gonna happen to them because I noticed like sheesh every year they just started moving around writers and stuff and letting go because I know again I'm a fan of Howard Beck wherever he goes I usually follow his writing work and I I, I subscribe to him because I again somebody that's been around Shaq and Kobe been around and covered the Knicks covered the Nets when they were completely awful and good um, I just you know he, he's seen a lot of basketball so somebody like that wherever you bounce around, I'm kind of going to just gravitate to what's your, your word or whatever. And once they let somebody at a Howard Beck's caliber go, I was just like, Hmm, I, I, again, mental, mental check. I was like, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm going to mark that down. Um, but yeah, man, I think this is sad. Uh, again, just, you know, this is what happened to the digital, you know, we're in the digital age and again, magazines aren't selling the same. So it's just, you know, it's kind of just, you know, Kind of the way it kind of goes. Uh, even you know, again, ESPN threw away their magazine uh, years ago because it was in. You know, do they still do ESPN the body issue though? No. Uh, I think they do some sort of version of it. 
I think they do some sort of version That's of it. That's the only one we cared about. That's the only one the streets cared about. <laughs> That's the only one Cap cared about. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dead Ass didn't, wasn't, um, wasn't, uh, no, yeah, um, yeah. wasn't, uh, Serena Williams on one of them? Yeah. Yep. Serena Dead was ass, on there. That's the one we cared about. Uh, you know, they got, they had a few. They had a few. Yeah. Uh, Prince Fielder Jr. was on one. That was, that was interesting. Uh, oh, I remember that one. That that one. That, I know yeah. that one was controversial. I remember that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I, what I would say is, I just you know, I know a lot of those writers were probably uh, probably part time writers, and um, a lot of people have been already. You know, they've been laid off or they they've left to other places because they saw the writing on a wall with Sports Illustrated and once it got bought out, bought by uh, the most recent company that owned them and everything. So um, it's unfortunate and it sucks for the writers. I know a lot of them had dreams of being coming up that way. And it, it, it is a big thing to have that on your name um, or on your resume, I should say. But um, so that's, that's like, all I that's can like really having, say. That's like how you have been, I went to Berkeley on your resume when you, when you go. Yeah. You, yeah. You, it's, it's out there, you, you know. Somewhere. And I don't even know if it still holds that. I don't know if it still holds that kind of prestige because, you know, because it, like Rel said, it didn't, it failed to evolve. It didn't, it was losing its effectiveness and it didn't, you know, it, like you said, it didn't because of the digital age and all those things. But, um, uh, it just sucks. You know, being on the cover of a magazine used to be big, man. It used to be big. and It used to be dope. And it sucks that it's no longer a thing. And obviously, we know why. And, you know, it, I, it's going to be... I to the Slam magazine and the cover athletes on the Slam magazine, but that's me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, it sucks. But I all I hope for is those writers, and they most likely will land on their feet. Land on and land at a better place that takes, you know, takes journalism seriously. That's unfortunately we're in a in a time period where journalism and media has been heavily criticized for you can't not uh, show your face. You have not you you have to be well and good at writing, but you kinda have to show your face somewhere now too. You can't just hide behind Yeah. You have to show your yeah. face and personality. Yeah, you have to yeah. And it's, personality. It's really those uh And so, you know, right now, media and just, you know, journalism is in a place where people are um, not trusting it. And um, for whatever reason, you know, and there's a myriad of reasons that I'm not saying that you should feel that way about it. I'm just saying we know that there's some things where it's just hard to for people to trust it and it sucks because they trust things that aren't true <laughs> or things that are uh, that are more conspiracy. But it is what it is. Just hope that they land on their feet, you know. All right. So number three on that list, I told you guys I was going to keep the trend of telling you guys the viewership of every Super Bowl. The, um... Who won? Who won? <laughs> tell us. This one's tell interesting. Who won. This one's interesting. All right. So before I tell you guys this, who you out of the two games, who you think, wh- what would you guys think uh, had more views, uh, the Niners Chiefs, Ravens. Lions game or the Chiefs uh, Ravens game? Chiefs Ravens. Uh, like, last week I said Niners uh, Lions, so I'm sticking with that one. Jesse, you'd be right. If the Niners Lions won this week. I knew it, bro. I knew it. Not by much. I knew it. So Lions and the, the Lions and Forty Nine ers average. 56.7 million viewership on Fox projected to rank as the most watched NFC championship game in over a decade. See, Jesse, a decade. Um, anyway, uh, we, we don't have to talk about numbers again, but I'm just telling you what the numbers are. How numbers let's, are. let's go back throughout that decade and see how many good actual NFC championship no, my, games there were. I was making my point. I was saying you can't compare today's numbers to those numbers because numbers back then were just astronomical. Uh, and oh, yeah. the Ra- sure. in the Chiefs in the Ravens uh, game was at fifty five point six viewership. So right there on the cuffs, real close. Uh, both games had a hell of an interest. Hell of interest. Uh, Taylor Taylor lost. That was the first time a Taylor, <laughs> Taylor Taylor game did not win in the viewership game. Um, speaking of which, we didn't talk about this at all when we was talking about NFL real quick. But I just want to just throw this. Again. We don't have to even make this a long thing. Uh, so I don't know if you guys are aware, uh, but I, you know, this has hit my timeline and I kind of pay attention to this because I, uh, 
every now and then I listen to Pod Save America. Um, but there's this conspiracy theory going around by, um, uh, I don't know how to refer to these people. I, I want to just, I don't want to group all the conservatives together because I know there's different varieties of con- conservatives, but I'm just going to say the MAGA people that believe that the NFL is rigged and, um, Taylor Swift is a proxy of Joe Biden to gain viewership of inter- uh, to 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 use Taylor Swift's popular pop uh popularity to sway the election. So because she's with Travis Kelsey and Travis Kelsey obviously is vaccinated because he did the Pfizer commercials. Um <laughs> Why were you talking about redneck post? Bro? I'm just, I'm just saying. There's the, the 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 conspiracy theory is that Taylor is literally this entire time has been a a, a a pawn in a Joe Biden scheme to have him because they are aligned apparently that she is there to sway viewers uh, votership from the Swifties to beat Donald Trump in this year's election and you guys don't have to say anything but i just want to let people know that that's what they're that's that's what's being said by the magas um and the conservatives party all right i'll leave it at that because we don't talk politics on this podcast but you know wild fucking stupid but okay <laughs> um number five on the not list um we we didn't touch on this last week um so, uh, you know, Jess Hilarious in the Breakfast Club announced that she's going to be the person taking the seats, uh, taking um, Angela Yee's spot. Um, it was weird because they were like a couple weeks ago, there was it was up in there because it seems like Jess Hilarious uh, prematurely announced that she was going to take that chair. And then Charlemagne. Uh, asked, they did the okie doke on them. Yeah, they did the okie doke on everybody. And, and, you know, when he was being, uh, he was asked by a TMZ reporter uh, somewhere outside, was asked about it. And he said, uh, you know, it's still been me and Envy, and they, they, the chair has still been rotating. So he's like, he hoped they find a host. And they did this really weird, I heart, corny way of announcing it with the chair and the little. Oh, uh, you called it corny. That was nice. Ah, come it was on. a little corny. Yeah, no, was it? They, it was and then they used that. They used everything everybody was saying about him. Uh, no, did you see dope. it was a little corny too? Yeah, mm, you hate it. it. Okay, you hating? It was a little. You hate? Um, but... No, was it? They did the okie doke because you just said it seemed like she announced it prematurely, yeah. and then Charlamagne did it. They were fucking with us. They did it. They did the okie doke on us. Whatever. Um, congratulations, Jess Hilarious. I, again, I don't watch The Breakfast Club as soon as I used to, but I do like her up there because not only she's funny, uh, she's younger and she's she's created a lane for herself where you just don't look at her as the um, the funny internet comedian person because she has built herself up as a brand. Um, I think she's music knowledge. And as, as a stand-up. As, as a stand up, as, as a she, she killed in the stand up. I'm glad it's just hilarious and not somebody like B. Simone. No disrespect to B. Simone. Um, but I'm glad it was somebody like her, or no disrespect to Mandy B. But I'm glad it wasn't you or your horrible decisions. Uh, co host, I can't think of her name, Wheezy. I think, yeah, Wheezy. Um, yeah, so I'm glad Jess got that seat. I think that's dope. I think that's hard. We salute her. And I hope she does a great job. And I hope the Breakfast Club gets back. I probably never get back to where it was. But because Charlemagne's, I think Charlemagne's grown up. Is Charlemagne was like the villain. Oh, and, he's been, yeah, he's matured. He's grown up. He's, he's mature. mature. He don't. I do like he what don't he do said that about Nikki that people was killing him about. And we'll get to that uh, right now, actually. All right. Let's so it. let's get ready to have three men talk about girl beef. Um, what does that have to do with anything? What? First and foremost, the way you putting it is making it more sound worse than it actually. Yeah, is. we're not doing anything like what we I talk think about. It's great that, I think it's actually normally we I don't get, talk about. We don't. First of all, but, but like, but, but I'm saying that why are you put it in that way? Why yeah, you put it like, in that way? First of all, why are you? Because you over here, it's like three. First and foremost, hold on, Ralph. Let me get him. Let me get him. 
three three men talk about girl beef. Why are they women be? Why bad. you being look at you? Look at you. But Come on. It's in the context of the culture. So I didn't know that we not allowed to talk yeah, about women. Exactly. We don't allow to talk about nigga beef. No. That, that, yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna or talk is that, about or it, is that, I, or is that uh what they call it feminine uh or sensitive with men talking about women? Like we're not judging them. We're talking, we're talking about, about rap beef. Beef. that's what I said, Kev. Why you put it like that? It's rap beef. That's what we're talking about right now. Rappers beefing. Right, anyway, all right. So heard you, heard you, disagree with you, disagree with you. But uh, it's not rap beef. It's no, not no, rap, it's beef? rap beef. But okay, we don't talk. We don't normally talk about one. So beef. we can't have about uh, there. Those many we can't have opinions. But on literally after we recorded our last episode, um, it just shit just blew up as far as between. Uh, Nicki Minaj and Megan Thee Stallion. But okay, so let me give people the brief timeline. If you don't know, I feel like everybody else knows, but just for talking sake, I'm going to give the brief timeline. Uh, Megan Thee Stallion drops Hiss, which she's keeping the theme of her snake theme song names. Hopefully for this album, we'll see. Uh, yada, yada, yada. She drops a line in the song uh, <laughs> saying Megan's Law, uh, which Still hasn't confirmed that she was talking about Nicki Minaj, but for whatever reason, Nicki decided to. We use it know as a... who she. <laughs> Come on, Kev. <laughs> no, they... Why do Meg we need took, a conversation? You know, Meg Meg took shots at a lot of people in that song, and he nobody's talking about. The, nobody's talking about the Drake shot that much. Nobody's talking. No, about... because there's only one person that decided to respond. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Um. So yeah. So again. Whatever she drops the song, and immediately after, Nikki goes on a Bender tweet rant talking about everything Meg and I don't want to repeat any of the, a lot of the stuff she said because she not only did she say it and tweet it online, she didn't decided to put it in a song that came out three days That's after. Terrible. And then they were beefing, so the song was originally supposed to come out on a, a, a previous date, and then but. The beat was owned by the producer that Meg works with, whose name uh, uh, Lil Juke made it, and he was not approving said beat. So they had to find another beat for Nikki to put it on. And you could tell when, again, I still haven't heard the Nikki track because I'm not listening to Hot Garbage. I did get a snippet of it, yeah. to it when they played it a little bit on the Joe Button podcast because I wasn't going to give it a stream. But mm. I did hear it. And the it's, version it's that so Joe bad. played was actually not the version that came out, he said, because the beat that he played, the, the version that he played was the beat that it was supposed to be on. And the beat, uh, the version that came out on stream, uh, streaming services is the beat that was made afterwards. And well, know, then she could keep both of them. You about to say, because that, that wasn't saving that track either way. You could have put Dr. Dre and Pharrell on that bitch and, 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 not, and not saving it. She um, could have kept both of them. So, yeah. Since uh meg has been quiet she's kept it classy hasn't said a word and since then nikki's been yelling at the wall talking to herself talking to the barbs rallying her cult because that's what it is um so yeah what do you guys make of this before we take it into to multiple directions i don't know who wants to go first on low, low. um i'll go quick uh i just i i don't have a problem with anything anybody said because that's just beef you know i'm a kind of person hey, where you don't, have, you don't have a problem with anything nobody said no I don't. I don't have a problem with her bringing up her dead mother. Words are just words. Words are just words. And 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 and, and it's a rap beef. And and I mean, uh, Pusha T said somebody with sickle cell was sick, sick, sick. And and and, and for to Drake, there is no line. There is no line. There is no morals. That like you, you remember Drake? Wait, Drake. So remember, he made a suicide uh, lie. He said something suicide to Kid Cudi. Yeah, yeah. So Drake, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying. So it's like this is this is the land that you step in, and it's like Megan, you should know. And I hope Megan don't take nothing like you know, like Megan should know. Like, yeah, and she should take the gloves off. There's a lot of things you can insult Nikki about. So I have a problem with nothing nobody said. But I'll finish on this: is that I just don't know. In a, in the aspect of women's rap. I never think two women rappers beefing is good because I always think about like, you know, ladies night when, when, when they all came together and they was all rapping on the same track and that shit was cool. 
Like your little Kim was on that. Never the one. You hold on, Kev. You you cover your face, but I'm talking about like that was peak hip hop. What the fuck are you you covering your face? Little the uh, left eye was rapping on that. Ain't nobody was beefing. Um and and and, and little Kim women's is rap example. <laughs> women, but I'm just saying, women women's rap has never been in the place where they can afford a beef because it's like it's your two stars. And it's kind of like you split your fan base. You literally put Foxy and Kim against each other. What are you talking about? Yeah, but it, it, it never and it wasn't good. It never it never worked. It, it was never it was never it, made, it never made them better to be the one of their careers better. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Maybe they could they could make some good music together, get some money together. But it's like most of the time, women rappers get together. They usually do this. Uh, Jesse, mm. I didn't know where I was going to take that take, but Jesse, please. I don't even know where to start on this one. Um, yeah, it was just, you know, I kind of got, like, I'm one to say Nicki Minaj deserves all the accolades that she gets when it comes to what she done in the game. Um, you can't take that away from her. She she broke records. She's done things that, I, you know, and paved the way. Um and so I kind of get secondhand embarrassment seeing this stuff because it's just like, damn, man. Like, I'm the dude when, you know, there's that that moment, that awkward moment or that sad moment or that moment in the TV show that makes you very uncomfortable. And I change the channel. I'm like, eh, I can't watch this. I'm the one that gets uncomfortable with that and stuff. So, I, I, you know, that's what I felt when, I, you know, seeing all that. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't that she above it or that I, you know, I'm I'm speaking anything negative about it. It's just, you know, it's, I feel it's just ugh, it's uncomfortable. Um, now, like Rel said, I don't got no problem with what you say. Put it in the song. That's all I got to say. Don't don't sit here and go tweeting about it. It just don't look good yeah, when you're doing it like that. The song yeah, the, it don't that it don't look stupid. good when you do that. Yeah, stupid. it don't look good. It don't look good when you're doing it like that. Um, I also feel like, you know, a lot of people probably saying something about her, so I'm not going to, you know, make any assumptions about her. You also said her. it wasn't a diss record. Well, it don't matter. I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> Who cares what she's saying? <laughs> like, that's it. I will say this. I just want to point Meg, out how unhinged this person is, but keep going. <laughs> yeah, un- unhinged. Yeah. Uh, what I would say is that... Um, Meg came with it. You know what I'm saying? I, I liked what she was doing you know, right we, there. We can all agree. I haven't heard the whole... I don't even remember the name of the nigga this, to be honest with you, off the top of my head. Um, Bigfoot. 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 Yeah, Bigfoot. We both agree I that his, his is and, a and, better song than Bigfoot, right, though? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, hell yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, the whole thing is like... My thing is where the point is like, why is Nikki... Like, but like why is she so... Not even to the fact that she's above it. It's just like, why is she? Why is she so punching like, down? She's gonna, not even punch you down. I wouldn't say punch you down because they're both competitors. Like it may maybe in stature, yes, but as far as like they they're both in the, in this space of hip hop and culture currently. I mean, instead of being Nikki being the accepted OG because she hates on. I mean, I kind of kind of Nikki focus. She hates on every bitch that she gets around. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, like like she like she didn't. She want to be the one. She want to be the one, All right, so. that, but the whole thing matter. is she 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 beats with people who don't even rap consistently. Like right. Megan, don't even put out albums for years. When the last fucking time Cardi B even put out an album? Well, I don't think that got to that, do that, it. That, I don't, well, that, that ain't got that nothing to do with it, though. That, that beef. I mean, I guess it started with hip hop, but it's it's it started with hip hop. It started with hip hop. It started with hip hop. Yeah, I I but that that's not it. Don't like. I don't think that has to do with anything when it comes to like, oh, when did they drop an album? That's you know, I mean, obviously we're not going to album compared to album. I think I I, I kind of feel like it's just she want to still be on top, or or like you said, she you know she she was on top or anything, and she want to get the she want the type of respect. I sp- spoke on this before. We talked about this where you know when she said she should get respected like Jay Z or. She, all this stuff, like, and I understand that, but I kind of feel like, man, I always ask the question. And I ask this a lot: Who is Nikki? When you compare yourself to all those stars, right? Wayne, Wayne put all these people on. Jay Z put all these people on. 
um, when you naming all these people, it's like you know they they stature goes a long way because of what they built. I you know, unfortunately, Nikki has built a, a a nasty rap with people, and every time when it comes to this stuff, it's like yo, like why is it always like it comes to this type of thing? And you know, even her type her type of diss, right? Meg went with Megan's Law did a thing where, but her type of diss one was line, I'm one a, line, one line in the song. Yeah. And she talking about her physically, talking about you know you know her her who she fucking. Mm-hmm. It was a very nigga like diss, like a very man like diss. I'm gonna talk about you physically. I'm gonna talk about how easy you is to fuck. And then I, if all else fails, I'm gonna talk about your mama that's dead. And that's kind of like that's a very male like diss in what she's doing. Where Meg. Made a diss where it's like I'm talking about you, you know, yo, yeah. which all right. But so exactly. before we get to that, let me let me let me say what I was gonna say. Um, so I I agree what you said in the first part where he was like, obviously. So let me let me say all my positive stuff about Nikki first. Um, Nikki is a legend. She came in the rap game when to the literally the tail end of Little Kim. Um, obviously for whatever reason, hip hop. Mm, I would say even after her. Ed. Huh? No, I would say it was probably after. Uh, uh, like, I mean, yeah. lighters. I think Nikki was out when lighters, lighters up came out. Um, but um, oh, okay, yeah. Um, to tell in for whatever reason, for whatever reason, hip hop does not like when it can't be multiple women on top of the mountain on the mountain at the same time at all. Like I said I, before, I said, can I hold on with Foxy and Kim? Hold on, let me interrupt you and uh. It and Nikki came up in a time like that. Yeah. When now it's actually we are having multiple women on top now. That's what I was gonna say. And that's, that's what the, that's that, the that, was, that was what I was getting to. That's, that's what I was getting to. Okay, so, sorry, my bad, and, my bad, my bad, my bad. And there was no facsimile of her around her. I mean, obviously Kim. I mean, I, I mean honestly, Nikki is uh, you know, a facsimile of Kim. That's why her and Kim had beef because the pictures the style, the the pose that she did was all Kim, and then she did not respect and show respect to to Kim. Um, but I, I don't want to take anything from Nikki and her talent. Obviously, she came out and she's held her own. She came out and was literally having the best verse on tracks with some of your favorite hip hop artists. So again, I will, I. Again, I still to this day talk about how she has the best verse on Monster with, and that song has Jay Z, Kanye West, and she has the best verse on it. Uh, Rick Ross. Um, I was like, somebody. Oh, I guess you. I guess you can count that as a Rick Ross verse, but I really I mean he says like six bars and then leaves. Um, anyway, but yeah, like Nikki was holding her own for a long time. She held the torch for a very long time before other people started coming up in the game. But like I said, the same way Kim was resistant to her and there was not that connection between them, Nikki is doing the same thing. The history is, re- is repeating her, it, it re- repeating itself. Nikki has beef with Kim. Nikki has beef with Remy Ma. The, the, again, we forget about the Remy Ma beef and Remy Ma, Sheether, I wouldn't, I still don't forget Sheether because for whatever reason. Remember that was the, and it was like Remy Ma and, and Remy Ma was supposed to be before I mean, she not even yeah. supposed she was before, before. Uh, Nikki, yeah. but it was like they were supposed to be at the top at the same time until Remy Ma got you know got in her legal trouble. Yeah, she got in her legal yeah. trouble. Um, and if to me, honestly, if we're just talking about, I I think Nikki's a talented rapper, and I don't like when she does little voices thing, but I think Remy Ma can rap just as well as Nicki Minaj. That's me. If anybody feels any different, whatever. But I feel like Remy Ma raps just as good, if not better, than Nicki Minaj. But again, so no, I that's, that's two. That's t- what'd you say, Rep? That's true. Okay. Uh, so Little Kim did. Uh, you know, she has the thing with Little Kim. She has the thing with Remy Ma, and then obviously. She has a thing over the uh, motorsport song with Cardi B. Um, and then her and Cardi is like literally the biggest facsimile of back and forth between women thing that happens. Obviously, we, if you guys know all the history, uh, these people, it, it's, it's gone beyond hip hop to where it's gotten physical in some places. And obviously, it almost gotten physical between them two at the Met Gala, if I remember. I forget what year that was. Um, I think they did get physical. <clears throat> 
Nah, uh, I think Riley was the one that was stepped inside. If you remember that, it wasn't Nikki. I mean, I remember Cardi got pulled out of somewhere. Yeah, she like threw something. So yeah, it was it was, it was Riley. Yeah. It was Riley. If you guys remember again, I watched Live on. Oh, okay. Riley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's that, and then so I, that's three women. And then Nikki has this beef with Lotto that stems from, I don't know, quite know what, because Lotto had the wrong information about something. I could be wrong. Somebody can fact check me. Um, and then obviously her beef with Meg. So I just, again, I just named five different women in five different situations where all these women have one person in common that they're beefing with. And it's Nicki Minaj. I think Nicki Minaj is a bully. Again, talented woman, talented rapper. I think she's, you know, the Mount Rushmore of of, of women rap. Uh, she's 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 done that. She's carried the torch. I talked about other, but I do think she's a bully. She wants people to bow down. She wants people to kiss the baby. She wants to be. Uh, you can tell she wants to be. She she wants to kiss be the ring. Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. She wants to be separated, separate from all these people. Which again. Cardi doesn't, again, it's been confirmed, Cardi doesn't write her own rap. So, again, she wants to be separated from her because Cardi, because Nicki Minaj writes her own raps. Uh, she fought tooth and nail about the Safari thing where people were saying Safari was writing a rap. So, that's understandable. Um, but you can tell how Cardi operates and how Nicki operates. Cardi embraces all the woman rappers that's been in the game. Meg, she has two big hits with Meg. Hello? Lotto, City Girls, anybody you name, uh, uh, Glorilla, uh, yeah, that's what I said, um, Glow. All these people, like you can tell, Cardi moves. She's about to have different. a. She's about to have a track with Scarlett. Yeah, like you can tell, Cardi moves a little different, and then again, Nicki Minaj. Again, do what you want, do what you will. Nicki has made this divide in 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 the industry where. If you work with any of these people, you are on her list where she they she doesn't want to work with you. Like there's literally a list of artists that Meg, Lotto, all these other people, Cardi cannot work with because Nicki Minaj has vowed that she won't fuck with you if you go on that side. Again, uh, from what I was told, um, um, listen to other podcasts that that ain't new. That ain't new in hip hop. That that thing has always been there. It's just now we know who was doing the dividing. We just didn't know who was doing the divide, dividing back then. Um, but yeah, I just think Nikki's a bully. Um, but again, uh, I also think this song is not whack. So they were saying on the Joe Budden podcast that, that they feel like this is the charged up version because Nikki claims that she has five other diss versions for Meg, which I don't personally believe. But if she does, cool. Um, they say, I don't think this get better though. <laughs> that's my thing. I don't think this gets yeah, better. Leave it alone. <laughs> it just oh, doesn't um, sound like it's gonna get better. That part. Um, she was saying that um, that she has five other, like I said, that she has five other versions of this. Um, and honestly, like you guys said, I don't think Megan's gonna speak back at all because I think she said she wasn't. She said she's gonna drop the song in it. America, she's she was in New York. She talked about she talked about her 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 upcoming tour, her new album that's gonna be releasing. Um, I think, I think relatively not soon, but I think she's gonna drop a song soon. And that again, yeah. just just to pull a bit, just the the hubbub of everything that's going on is just gonna write, bring her numbers up to her, um, her 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 sales and stuff. But again. I'm glad this is staying on. I'll say this as a base. I'm glad this is staying on hip hop. I don't want it to translate to anything else. I will say this about Meg. Meg, obviously, she she went up there and lied on Gail King. That's the one good thing that I I, I stand with 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 Nikki that she said on the verse because she literally went up there and lied uh, in front of Gail King. Said she never fucked Tori, which we all know is a lie. But you know, it is what it is. Um. Do you guys have anything else? God, I didn't know that had to be. I God, people hold on to something like that. It's the weirdest thing in the world. It's the weirdest thing no, in the world. You know, she, it's was, the. Like, the it, it's King like literally asked her straight up, like, "Did you fuck him?" And she said, "No." And I'm just and, and when all hip hop knew, we all knew. This is like, all right, okay. Damn, she lied about who she had sex with. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, niggas do it all the time. 
<laughs> I just, yeah, it's weird. Man. That guy. So y'all agree that? Well, so you already said Meg's already said that she's not gonna respond. So Meg's not gonna respond. I think she. I think we'll get a little jab on the album somewhere, but I don't think. I think. I think. Um, I think Nikki's just gonna continue. To oh, she that. gonna say no. She gonna say that. What I'm saying about responding, I don't think she gonna. Put something out on the, you know, put tweet or do any of that shit. But she'll literally musically, yeah, she'll probably say something question, musically. But question before we move on to Lakers scoring and get up out of here, um, how do you guys feel about the random support that Meg has been getting from people like Megan Fox, the uh, Kendall Jenner? Uh, I can't think of the mom's name off the top of my head. Um, Chris. Chris, um, what do you guys think about that? What is what did that tell you guys that Meg is getting support from other people that she's not saying anything? <clears throat> mm, or does yeah, that say anything yeah. to you guys? They don't say nothing to me. I don't, you know, they you know, that's usually what happens if you know people take a side. And she is, you know, she has a good relationship with the the Jenners or Kendall Jenner or whatever. I wouldn't, I I wouldn't say a good relationship, but she's cool with them. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I, that don't mean nothing. Man, got kicked out of Kylie Jenner's house. That's why I said that's why I find it interesting because like this whole thing yeah. happened because she got kicked out of Kylie Jenner's house, right? Yeah, the shooting happened. So, she got kicked out of Kylie Jenner's house. Um, all right. Yeah. So I I, I don't know. Hey, yeah, that don't mean nothing to me. Getting support don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> Bet. All right. So, all right, man. So let's go ahead and get this 10 minutes to talk about what the hell the unbelievable, unprecedented zombie Los Angeles Lakers did today. So for those who don't know, the Lakers today played the Boston Celtics at the Garden without LeBron James, without Anthony Davis, and – Pretty much one wire to wire uh, against a fully healthy Boston Celtic team. Um, They've been blowing guys, people out. They've been whooping ass. Who? Okay, so I'm adding. I'm 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 gonna keep adding sauce to it because this is very. The Boston Celtics have lo- only lost two games up until last night at home, and both of those games was one against the Denver Nuggets. That was a very very good, probably arguably one of the games of the year up until. Um, probably Lakers the Warriors. Warriors and Lakers game, huh? I'm about to say, don't forget about Lakers Warriors. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I was, up until the Lakers were, were that was more recent, but yeah, up until the Lakers Warriors game, that was to me that was that and whatever one of the the uh, the Pacers games was probably arguably the game of the year to me, but that was arguably the game of the year, and then they got smacked on by the Clippers uh, a couple weeks ago, and now. They, their third loss of the season at home is to a LeBronless, Anthony Davis, pretty much Vandoless. I mean, he played the first half, but then he got hurt in the third. Uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Now, what w- what do we say about this team? Now they're five hundred again. The trade deadline is literally a week away. Um, where do you guys stand? I think I know where Darrell stands. Darrell, do you still want to trade D'Lo? Um, do you want to trade Austin? Where do you stand? Do you think the Lakers should make moves or do you want to keep the team and stand pat? You're a 500 team at 50 games in a season. Yes, you should make moves. Um, just because with, just because you shifted from one set of role players to get you through the season last year should just show you that you know, you're know you missing something and it was enough of a boost to get you there. And, and it may be when you have these two players, you have to always be swinging for the home run every, every chance you get. There's no waste in a year or trading 80. Is Jante Murray so, yes. a home run? I think it is. Okay. 21 points out of one player. Keep going. I'm, I'm, and I, defense. I, was, I was legitimately asking you the question. I was legitimately asking you. Defense I mean, because, they, because they, you know, the guys like Woj and Sham, but well, Woj especially keeps saying, like, oh, Lakers should wait for something bigger. But it's like, we're not getting Donovan Mitchell. We're not getting Trey Young. That doesn't make us. That doesn't, you know, like. I, like so, we, I don't even want them. I don't like. like I don't like. Want we them. don't like. Yeah. It's like, I don't want either one of those guys. So everybody like, you wanted Donovan just, Mitchell. Don't do that. I mean, yeah, it's you a, to, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, like, but it's a pipe dream because he, I, I only, yeah. I only envision him on the Knicks, you know, like you know, or, yeah. so, 
I I don't I don't I don't the Nick either. The the Knicks faithful love Jalen Brunson. They freaking yeah. Keep going. I mean yeah, but I mean he's I I see him stand on the East Coast either whether it be Knicks Nets or or he. I, I don't think Donovan Mitchell's a West Coast guy. I don't know if he would be enticed by the light to the Lakers. So either way, I think we should make a move. Dejounte Murray moves me if we can do it. However we can do it. If it's Reeves, it's Reeves. You know. <laughs> So that's crazy to say after his 32 point game, seven, three. I mean, no, because the whole thing is that he, he he's become a liability on defense. I didn't know about the regression was coming. He, he's not a third banana. You can't win with him as your third option. You can't, he's not your third. He, he's a fourth option role player that you can, and he's a play like one that you can just rely on, you know, but like in the terms of like, he, can he be a third banana all season? No, he can't. Well, but yes, the fourth banana on the Lakers because Delo's the third banana. Exactly, Delo's already surpassed that's the them. Problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's, that's why. That's why problem. both of the ass should be gone. Yeah. Um. So, well, so before you go, Jesse. Uh. So you do you say yes to the to to the Murray deal and then nothing else? That's that's just the trade and that's it. Yes to any trade if you call us. <laughs> no, you can't say yes to any trade because you'll get mad if they brought back Dorian Finney Smith. Or some bullshit. But anyway, yeah, I um, I'd be pissed if they did something like that. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, preferably, like, I, I don't think, it, I don't know what move really makes them like. I right, this is a championship contender now. It's like you see the team, and it's like we had all the pieces. I don't understand what's going on. The one piece I feel like we don't have is um a true. Uh, or uh, a backup center, you know? And Jackson Hayes had 16 and 10 today. He played his greatest game. You keep this thing where you want to. In my opinion, I've, I've, I don't follow Jackson Hayes' yeah. career closely. But 16 and 10 is Hell, crazy. Thank crazy. God he didn't foul out in like two minutes. Um, uh, no, nah, like I just, I'm not, I, you know, what I mean, if I, if you were to tell me who do you think, I, I think if he was up for, you know, go get a Jared Allen, if he was up for, you know, um, for trade on the trade block, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, shore up what we need. Because, you know, Hayes, or not Hayes, Jackson Hayes, but uh, what's his name? Uh, Christian, Christian, Wood. Christian Wood ain't it, man. He ain't tell it. Tell me about it. Yeah. Um, tell me about it. We, when you told me whenever you get the ball, your ass off this up. team, Christian Wood. LOL, your ass off this team, homie. <laughs> um, so it's just one of these things where I just, I just look at it like we, I, I don't think they're gonna trade anybody. I, I truly don't. And if it does happen, I don't know if it's gonna, be, I don't know if they're gonna get better because it's like we have all the pieces and just well, 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 one of our most important. Off-season acquisitions hasn't played barely played a dribble this season in Gabe Vincent. This is why. This is why Dejounte. I don't think. I don't think the Dejounte trade is just for this year. The Dejounte trade yeah. is for is for is for if LeBron. Life after LeBron. Leave. It's for and life you know after what? LeBron. Yeah. You know what? And I'm getting to the point now where it's like Bron. You know, I like Space Jam. Tell too. me about it. No, no. Keep cooking. You you in the kitchen? But, keep going, Ralph. Keep going. You you getting there? I'm not hanging no banners anytime soon. You know, I'm looking up there. In 2020 now, it's four fucking years ago. Turn on the stove. I'm a Turn whole new stove. person. You there. I'm a whole new person since 2020. I need the fucking ring. I need a fucking ring. I don't know what's going no, no, on. I thought you was going to talk about his play. No. He's having 25 points a game. We talking about. But at the same time. Like I, but, but, fast lately. but keep going. Yeah. He's, but all I'm saying is that we ain't doing enough winning. So, so you know, Yo, all the fat Braun week, DraftKings deal, uh, <laughs> all the shit that's going on. Where the rings at? Uh, question for you. Uh, I know this won't save the Lakers, and probably you, you're probably gonna say hell, fuck no. But um, what do you think about the Lakers um, in the bio market bringing Kyle Lowry in? No. <laughs> fuck no! What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, is, why, why are you throwing dumb shit out there? Yeah, now question. I'm done. I can't get off the of guy. Get off of me, I'll take That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. We have a question, but I will say this: if the Heat gave up on you, it probably does say something. 
Here's the thing the Heat gave this motherfucker for Terry Roger. The Heat for gave him a hundred million dollars and let him stay there up until they was like, okay, well, we can get you a hundred million dollars and you still getting fat, so um, we're just not gonna play you no more. He you culture. Know, it's, it's, knees, it's fantastic. His, body, his, his body's breaking down, bro. Don't do that. Don't do that. They gave him a hundred. They gave a Hans, Hassan Whiteside a hundred million, almost sixty million dollars. They gave Larry a hundred million dollars. They gave uh Deion Waiter sixty million dollars. They gave uh Tyler Johnson fifty million dollars. Like he culture. It's why fantastic. Bring, why are you bringing up the old stuff? They're still doing it. They just gave Kyle Lowry this contract three years ago. Well, I mean, look, Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry's he's also having right other now. issues. He's also having other issues in Miami. He's not, he, he, he never had it. He got a BBL. He just, he's still, he, yeah, like, no, I, come on. he just stopped shooting. He stopped shooting. I'm just talking about personally. He had personal problems, too. So he's he's actually never had a good time in Miami. If you find, uh, no. and uh, the, he played, the, the reporter, he just, he wasn't scoring. He was just defending. Oh, like, I, I, he had a I'm not talking about any. I ain't talking about anything basketball. I'm talking about nothing but personal life. Oh, my bad, my bad, <laughs> he's, my bad. he's been having a lot of personal issues in Miami, and uh, the you know the and then on top of that the condition and all stuff. But you know the the reporters have been very very quiet about things that was going on with him. And he's he, you know he's he's usually like a happy jovial guy. If you notice, he was not that all this season. So. It's uh, sure. you know, he's stealing all that he, goddamn money. You think he would be happy? I will say this: he's been a, wanting, he's been wanting out of Miami for a while now. I will say this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. There's all a right. new rule. There's a new rule. Um, that I made, I was made aware of uh, recently that um, in the buyout market, uh, if you're an apron team, it doesn't matter if you're you can't sign second, anybody over twelve million. You can't sign over anybody in the, uh, the buyout market. Um. Any none of the contenders can sign certain players out of the buyout market if you're a first apron team or a second apron team. Mm. Second apron team, and it's because of the MLE for the yeah. for for the minimum. So yep. that limits where Kyle Lowry can go. So it's either Lakers. Mm-mm. I'm Knicks. just telling you, Lakers. Stop. I'm just saying he can't go to the. Club. Stop telling us, Cam. Stop telling us. Him and Lakers should not be in the same sentence unless they play at each other. Stop doing that. Kyle Lowry's gonna he has up, no purpose on the he's Lakers. Gonna end up on some team, and I'm letting you go. Don't, we I'm don't gonna... need a fat nigga Phoenix. that take charges. Phoenix, <laughs> let him go to Phoenix. Can he go to Phoenix? He can switch. No, because they're a second apron team. Second apron team. It's like Denver, Denver, it's Phoenix, Denver Clippers. It's Denver and us, basically. No, we're not a second apron team. You're crazy. No, 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 that's what I'm saying. The teams that bio teams that are allowed to acquire him. It's Denver is a second apron team. They can't sign anybody. They're a first apron team. I don't think they're. A they're a second apron team. They can't sign anybody. Oh, I mean, apron. for the people that are the people that uh, are new and uh, don't know everything basketball, what is first apron and second apron team? Uh, first apron, I believe, is if your team is at one forty-three million. One hundred thirty-five million. Thirty-five, and the second apron is if you blast through that. You gotta go like towards to 190 to be a second apron team, which means you're limited on the moves you can make. You can't take on multiple salary. You can't trade multiple can't players move together. Players, yeah, to, to make to yeah acquire one player. It's it's all fucked up. So it's if your team up. salary is like at 135 and less, yes, you're a second apron no, team. No, hold on, no, no, it's 190 you, above. You may become a second apron team. 190, yeah. Oh. yeah. But he was asking about if you're if you're under that you're what's the he was asking what's under the first apron basically right Jesse? Yes, basically. Yeah, my bad. Yes, under the first apron, it's one thirty five and thirty five. Kind of like where the Lakers are. I think the Lakers are like, and that's your salary cap. That or the that's Lakers what the like team salary is. Four million at. before being a for being a, being like yeah, we're not going to be an apron team. team. Yeah, Rob knows what he's doing. Rob knows what he's doing. All right. We definitely uh, ran off all the women talking about aprons and uh, salary caps and stuff. Scaring the hoes. Scaring, scaring the hoes away. Just shout out the clips. Uh, clips. We love you, man. I don't know what you're going through. I, I'm, I'm leaving us at the end of the pod because I don't want people in your personal business because the people that get here really fuck with us. So I just want to say whatever you got going through, oh, man, we love you. We appreciate love you. Love you, Clips. Thank you, love man. you, I'm brother. Good over there. Um, Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you guys. We love you. Don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. It helps the pod grow. Uh, if you're new here, uh, watching on YouTube, please subscribe, leave a comment. Um, uh, 
and uh, follow us on Instagram. You don't have to follow our personal Instagrams because we don't tweet about anything that's interesting, especially uh, myself. Um, but I did tweet about the little hate thing. If you, if I was gonna buy that hat, and there, see, people seem to enjoy that because I do feel like you guys would have judged me if I'd have bought the Usher Super Bowl hat. We had the little U on the side. I felt like you guys was. Gonna... Bro, I want that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I felt like you guys was gonna judge me, so I didn't. No, I want that. I made the executive decision. That. I'll get a shirt, but I made the executive. I wanted the hat at the time when I first saw it. I was like, I like the hat, but it got the U, and I know how these niggas get down. Y'all gonna judge me if I buy the hat, so I didn't buy the hat. But uh, Pharrell, for Jesse, uh, my um, classic, and uh, we're those millennials, and we're out.